Freeway? Video game? Metro route? How about food web? Basically, a food web is a map of all of the interactions, what we call the trophic interactions, in an ecosystem or community. And those are predator-prey interactions. Who eats whom? Who eats you? What do you eat? And so on. The food web is one of, if not the most important representation of interactions that we have in an ecosystem because it's a main passage of energy through that system. Energy is produced, it's consumed, it's recycled, and everything else runs on that. Like a food chain, but much, much bigger. We have hundreds of species. Um, we're pushing things into the thousands now. And then you have thousands, of, tens of thousands of interactions. I have a colleague who refers to these diagrams as the hair at the bottom of the bathtub diagram. All of those lines that you're looking at are exchanges of energy and information that are taking place like every day in an ecosystem or took place every day in an ecosystem a quarter of a billion years ago. Then it really hammers home to you just how much is going on out there in the natural world. Peter studies both ancient and modern food webs. In fact, he needs one to study the other. The first step is trying to understand who lived in a given or lives in a given place in time and how do they interact. So in the modern, for example, we've done work on coral reef food webs and ecosystems. And the first step is listing the species that are present in that coral reef. Our data on that become better and better as we conduct more and more sampling expeditions and so on to coral reefs. But he can't go back in time and gather data millions of years ago. Now, some of it is obvious. So if you look at two dinosaurs, we can tell you very quickly which one was a carnivore and which was an herbivore or a plant eater. But exactly what did T. rex eat, for example? And there's a lot of information that's not preserved or is missing from the fossil record. So when we try to understand an ecosystem from this, in this larger context, in the perspective of a system or a food web, we go to modern food webs to understand what some of those patterns of interaction might have looked like in the past. We've developed statistical methods that will allow us to estimate and predict with a very good accuracy what those unknowns are for many groups of organisms. We've looked at late Mesozoic or late Cretaceous ecosystems of North America. These are dinosaur-dominated ecosystems which came to a ab fairly abrupt end 65 million years ago. We're going to reconstruct the communities and the food webs from just prior to the mass extinction to after the extinction. Who did we lose in the mass extinction? And then how did the recovery begin? Peter hopes to take that data to peer into the future. If we can begin to understand how ecosystems suffered during environmental crises in the geological past and how they recovered or did not from those disasters, we can then begin to maybe add some understanding to what we're doing today.